Happy Wednesday morning, y'all. Remember yesterday I said I would use the leftover corn to make corn dip. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do this morning with y'all. Now I will bake it off, which will be fine. And the amount we have left over, um, we'll probably have that finished this evening because tonight I'm actually not cooking. We're gonna do something on the grill, something easy, and we can heat up our corn dip and have that, and we'll have it probably finished tonight with supper. Because I didn't end up with a whole lot. But you saw I went out to the garden, I got some onion chives, and I also got a jalapeno. And that's what I needed. Now I don't have an exact recipe, I'm just gonna combine some things. We'll go through the estimated amounts according to the corn. Now, if you were starting off with just canned corn or frozen corn, you're going to need a small can of diced chilies, mild, medium, hot. If y'all remember in yesterday's video, when I fried the corn, I added a can of the diced chilies. So they're already in here. And I would say with this amount of corn, you would need two of those cans of the Mexi corn and drain them. Um, if you were not using the Mexicorn, this is about one large can of corn, and that's estimating. So, Miss Charmaine, you wanted this recipe, and I had already planned on doing it, so our minds are thinking the same, so I'm going to drop you. We're going to get this corn dip going, and you can mix and exchange. I'm using ingredients that I already have, so... I'm not having to go to the store. And that's really what a recipe is, is looking in your pantry, seeing what you have, don't letting things go to waste, and just making a delicious dish out of it. Now, I am using bottled lemon juice. I would prefer lime juice. I have no limes and I have no lime juice. So, it's lemon. But if you were to make this, I would really suggest to use the lime juice, but we're gonna make the lemon work and then I'm also gonna add some lemon pepper to bring a little bit of acidity to balance it out because there's a lot of heavy ingredients. And I'll show you what I mean by that. But they're good ingredients. Okay, to this bowl, I have a third of a cup of mayonnaise, a third of a cup of sour cream, and a third of a cup of cream cheese. Now this is softened cream cheese you can use the whipped, you can use the regular block, but the, I did let it sit a couple hours, it's soft. So a third of a cup of cream cheese, a third of a cup of sour cream, and a third of a cup of mayonnaise. That's our base, and I hope that I didn't over measure this because I'm looking at my corn over here and I'm really kind of eyeballing it, guys, but I think I'm in the ballpark because this is not gonna make a lot but plenty for Buddy and I. And I wanna kinda of get this combined. You could use a mixer, but seeing how my cream cheese was already soft, I think this is gonna be just fine. Cause we're gonna be blending all this together and it will be baked in a 350 degree oven. Okay, now to this, I've got about three tablespoons of red onion and that diced jalapeno. I do like red onion when I'm making my dips. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon pepper. I'm just gonna eyeball it, guys. Maybe a half a teaspoon. Now you could add some chili powder to this. I'm gonna opt for some cumin, even though I've got cumin in my corn from yesterday, I'm gonna opt for the cumin. Come on out of there. About like that. Uh-oh. Y'all don't do what I just did. I grabbed the curry. Oh, no. You see, I'm not cutting this out. This is real life. Okay, I think I got it all. Oh, my heavens. Don't go in a dark pantry without glasses. Let me go get my cumin. Whoo, that could have been a mess up. There's my cumin. Oh my heavens. Now let me see. I've got a little bit more right here. I may lose a few onions, but I definitely don't want uh, 
that curry. Okay, let me see. All right, I don't smell curry. Good Lord. See, this is real. Now, about a fourth of a teaspoon of cumin, guys. Lord, and I will be giving it a little bit of salt. Salt does balance. Now let's get this mixed. I can't believe I did that. Yes, I can. Because I wasn't paying attention this morning. I was just reaching and grabbing. This is going to be good. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of black pepper. Even though I added some lemon pepper, I want a little bit of black pepper. Not much. Remember, lime juice is better, but I'm going to use lemon juice. Let me see. Maybe a half a teaspoon, guys. And then here comes the cheese. I would prefer to use all pepper jack, but I've got a mixture of cheese. I've got cheddar cheese and pepper jack and a little bit of mozz. So I'm gonna use all of the cheese. And like I said, I would prefer all pepper jack but this is cheese that when I grate, I kind of add to it and I try to find ways to use it without wasting it. Now you could put cheese on top of this dish. As you can see, I didn't reserve any, so we won't have cheese on top of our dish. And guys, this is how I cook. A lot of times, I just take what I have Okay, that's well and combined. Now, we're going to add our corn. I'm going to get that curry off of this and just use that. Oh, oven's ready, 350. And if I had to guess on this corn, I think I'd be right. One large container of drained corn or two of the uh, Mexican corns, which is my favorite. I think it's a mixture of shoe peg and golden corn and I did let this oops I did let this corn sit out uh, about 30 minutes before I started the video I went and grabbed some freeze-dried jalapenos because I don't think I have enough there again that's going to be to your palate and as this heats up it's going to rehydrate the jalapeno. You see, I didn't add too much, but I do want a little bit of bite. After all, it's dip. Now this would be good if you actually filled um, a cubanelle pepper and roasted it in the oven, stuffed jalapenos, but we're gonna eat this with chips, tortilla chips to be exact, or we may grab the corn chips. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, I'm going to get it into this ramekin, and I hope I judged right. I did spray my, oops, look at that. Boy, it's a day, isn't it? I did spray my ramekin, guys, for easier cleanup. I got to make sure I remember to wipe that side off. Let's see how well I judged. Oh, my, y'all look at this. <laughs> Maybe that's why my gut says, don't cook supper tonight, Libby. Get on the grill. Because, guys, I'm picking up limbs. Because I can't seem to function today in the kitchen. Of course, I'm using a utensil I normally don't use. I normally use, where's that other one? Y'all see me use this one. Because this is actually a right-handed spatula. Silicone spatula, by the way, it's cut. Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to be okay because I'm going to mash it down when I get it in here. But I don't want it boiling over. Now this is where you would want to top it with a little bit of cheese. Oh, that was perfect. See guys, I mean, I could scrape some more, but, and get it everywhere. Lippy in the kitchen. Y'all, I gotta wash my hands. I can't go any further till I get these hands washed. It's driving me nuts. Okay, I'm gonna get my mess cleaned up. Mercy. 
because I sure don't want that bacon on this ramekin. I'm gonna try to just wipe this up for a second. There we go. That looks so much better. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a little green onion for color, flavor. Just like that. I would say 15 to 20 minutes till it gets real bubbly. Um, but I would put something under it, which is what I'm gonna do so it doesn't bubble over into my stove. But you could have put a little bit of extra cheese, then the chives, that had topped it off, but I didn't think about it, I used it all. So 15 or 20 minutes and we're gonna taste it. But that's the perfect size, guys, for two people. Now, I'm not about to taste test right now. It's going to have to cool off. But look at that. Guys, this is going to be good. I'm going to try and sneak some out of the corner. Yes. Ooh, that is so hot. Put a little bit here, a little bit on the counter. I mean, you know. And let's see if I can mush that back in. Look at that cheese. And look, no one knows I've been in it. And once it cools, I have a beautiful lid to put on it. But I'm actually, since it's got a raised lip in there, I can put it like this so it can still vent. I may set it like that. But that is the perfect size. Actually, this is more than what two people need. I don't know where to bite first, except dive right in. Look at that. It smells great. It could have used more jalapeno. That's because, oh, I'm getting it now. Oh yeah, never mind. <laughs> At first I was like, wait a minute. But I like the cheddar. I like the moths in it. It's really good. But straight pepper jack, oh yes. But no more jalapeno. What was I thinking when I said, oh, I should have added more jalapeno. Uh-huh, but it's not too hot. Mm. It's not salty. The salt's from the, the chip. Guys, this is so good. Now, will it go with coffee? Mm-mm. But I needed to wash something down. This is good. And like I said, we threw these ingredients together. But if you keep equal parts of mayo, sour cream, and cream cheese as your base, depending on the volume, it's a home run. And pepper jack cheese. Um, what was that? Maybe, that was probably what, almost two cups of cheese? No. No. Let's say a cup and a half of cheese total, you know, in that ramekin that I had. Then everything else is just about building flavor according to your likes. This is a delicious corn dip. So, Miss Charmaine, I hope this helps a baseline. But the rule of thumb is the mayo, sour cream, and cream cheese equal parts because that's how I've always made it. But this is absolutely delicious. I'm tasting those green chilies. Like I said, if you don't already have it in there, you're not using leftover corn, definitely a can of green chilies. Don't drain them. Well, there's not much juice in them, but guys, this is delicious. So we had corn on the cob to start with. We had fried corn with green chilies yesterday to go in our tacos for Taco Tuesday. Today, I finished it off making a corn dip. So none of that corn went to waste. None of my cheese went to waste um, that I had already grated. I already had some sour cream, mayo, and cream cheese. Those are staples in my house. So nothing went to waste. And by tonight, 
no, we can't eat all that. Tomorrow, I'll send Buddy with a container. I'll have a container. And to be honest, we'll have chips and dip. And we'll nook it. We'll have chips and dip um, for our lunch tomorrow, which is fine for us. May not be fine for some of you, but it's fine for us. Um, you know, we're not picky eaters. And yes, we do eat things like this. Um, and we're happy. You know, we're, we're happy. We're big chip and dip kind of people. So now it's time for me to eat this, chug it down with a little bit of coffee, and I got a thousand plus limbs still calling my name. Guys, I don't know if I'll ever get them up. Oh, and Mud and Mabel, my golf cart, it got a flat so bad because I was riding over it trying to pick stuff up that, uh, excuse me, I messed up the, uh, what do you call it? The tube. So Mr. Buddy's having to stop today at lunch and go get a tube. So, Mud and Mabel is out of commission. Oh, and I'm going to insert a picture of what met me when I went to get the eggs about 3.30 yesterday afternoon. Because I was outside, I went and gave my chickens their treats, and I counted eight chickens, and I was like, huh, because normally there's seven, because I have to go in the coop and get red out because... Yeah, she's kind of a, a broody hen, and she wants to sit on the eggs. And, you know, when I saw her out, and they were kind of huddled, but they were out, I was prepared. So I'm going to insert that picture, and let's just say uh, Sammy, I'm going to name him Sammy, he won't be in my chicken coop no more. Just saying. <laughs>